Hello and welcome to St Benedict's Parish, Elin. Great to have you joining us for this Advent Reflection. My name's Daniel and I work in the parish here as Catechetical Coordinator. And I'm joined today by Sheila, who's a long-term parishioner at the Abbey. I'm sure many of you have seen her around at the 12 o'clock Mass over the years. Sheila is involved with uh, the Eucharistic ministry of, of that Mass and reading at Mass as well amongst many other things, the, the Lectio and uh, well, the meditation group as well, you, you join on a Thursday. Perhaps you could tell us about the Lectio? The Lectio is uh, uh, the practice of meditating on, um, on the scriptures. So I, I choose a, a piece of scripture and do a little bit of research on it, and then I lead the discussion uh, and then we gradually uh, begin to quiet down and pray about it and go into silence uh, to let God talk to us. So that happens on a Thursday? A Thursday morning at 10 o'clock uh, in the pullback room. Yes, yeah, so anyone's welcome to, to join yes, that. We, oh, yes, we And we, it, Sheila's also involved with the Inquirers group, which uh, has on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, from 11 o'clock. Um, so anyone who's interested in the faith, if you're not Catholic or if you haven't received a sacrament along the Christian journey, maybe confirmation, it's often quite common um, nowadays. So if you're interested in that, uh, Sheila and a, a group of, of volunteers help people journey um, along to receiving that sacrament. So if you're interested, get in contact with the, the parish office. Uh, but for, for this video, we're focusing on the Advent journey, and Sheila's going to uh, lead us in an Advent reflection for week one. So, Sheila, over to you. Yeah. Hello. As you are uh, well aware, God's relationship with his creatures, the human race, was developed over time by a series of covenants, agreements by which each side gives of itself, as if in a marriage. Our loving God gives all. We humans respond. The main covenants by which our Creator built up the people of God were with our first parents, Adam and Eve, uh, a married couple, then Noah, um, a family of eight, Abraham, a clan, Moses, a people, and finally King David, a kingdom or nation. While God remained ever faithful to his promises, the humans, the Israelites, with whom these covenants were made initially, systematically and over long periods of time violated the covenant agreement, violated the Ten Commandments, for instance, by going their own way without God, by economic policies that abused the poor, by foreign policy that depended on war, by religious practices that offended God, and by illusions of privilege before God, safeguarding their positions of power at all costs, by concentrating on the letter rather than the spirit of the law. At a time when their failure to keep their part of the covenant brought consequences on the Israelites, which saw their world crashing down on them and everything seemingly hopeless, the prophet Jeremiah dared to speak a word of hope. Look, the days are coming, Yahweh declares, when I shall make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, but not like the covenant I made with their ancestors the day I took them by the hand to bring them out of Egypt, a covenant which they broke, even though I was their husband, Yahweh declares. No. This is the covenant I shall make with the house of Israel when those days have come, Yahweh declares. Within them I shall plant my law, writing it on their hearts. Then I shall be their God, and they will be my people. There will be no further need for everyone to teach neighbor or brother, saying, Learn to know Yahweh. No, they will all know me, from the least to the greatest. Yahweh declares, since I shall forgive their guilt and never more call their sin to mind. The prophet Jeremiah wrote in a time of uncertainty, 
in which the future of the world was very much in doubt. Jeremiah wrote about the 13th year of Judah's King Josiah in about 627 BC until the 11th year of King Zedekiah in 586 BC. The Old Covenant was violated, and even though Josiah had brought about some important religious uh, reforms, they were short-lived as Judah was soon conquered by the Babylonians, and most of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, especially the elite, uh, were taken into captivity in Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar had, uh, had Zedekiah's sons killed before blinding him and leading him off to his death in Babylon, seemingly marking the end of the monarchy that God had promised David would last forever. The Judeans were in captivity for about 70 years. Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed. All lay in ruins and Judah was no longer an independent country. It must have seemed as if God had broken his side of the covenant. We ourselves are also living in a time of uncertainty, with a pandemic taking so many lives throughout our world and showing little signs of fading, with the climate changes causing more distress and casualties throughout the world, with extreme weather conditions, wildfires, flooding from heavy storms, melting of the ice cap with the consequent flooding of low-lying areas, creating the need for more people to be on the move as refugees, adding to those already fleeing for their lives from the many armed conflicts, situations of dire poverty or enforced lack of freedom existing in so many places. This at a time when the rich nations like Britain are treating refugees ever more harshly in spite of the exhortations from Jesus. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Or from the Old Testament, when a stranger sojourns with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. You shall treat the stranger who sojourns with you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself. What seems most distressing is the fact that so many politicians and big industries throughout the world have been procrastinating about doing anything about the climate crisis for years, and it seems almost too late. They are still talking rather than acting. We also are in a world controlled by the super rich and powerful who have far more than their fair share of the world's resources, where the poor are left to fend for themselves, where corruption and sleaze dominate, where racism is rampant, where God and his loving promises seem alien to so many people. I seem to be painting a very bleak picture of our world, but I am basically an optimist. And that is why this passage from Jeremiah resonates with me, because what Jeremiah does is to bring hope into the bad situation, a word of hope that can be applied to our own uncertain times. Back in the Middle Ages, Julian of Norwich informs us, our courteous Lord willeth not that his servants despair. For Jeremiah, there is no reason to despair because there is a new covenant on the way, one that is between God and the whole human race. It will be written on individual hearts, internal inspiration, not reliant on external coercion or the institutions of Israel which were about to crumble, an intimate relationship with God will be possible. A new covenant was to be introduced to the world by a vulnerable infant, God's Son, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, a baby in need of loving care provided by us 
humans. A baby who was to grow to forgive our sins and to eventually take on the punishment we deserve for our sins by undergoing a horrendous torture and death. He was to bring a covenant of love by which we can learn to forgive and forget, to abandon rem remembrance of wrongs, to forget retaliation and its accompanying rage, hostilities and violence, a covenant by which all people are treated with uh, dignity and love. We humans did not do a very good job of nurturing the infant Jesus, as very shortly after his birth, his life was threatened and he and his parents were forced to become refugees. Fortunately, the Egyptians seem to have been much more welcoming to refugees than our modern wealthy countries like Britain or the EU are to our desperate refugee, to our desperate refugees. This year, let us give the baby Jesus a loving welcome and not allow Advent and Christmas to be hijacked by the secularist and commercial interests that have been doing their best over the last couple of months to distract us from what this season is really about. Let us meditate on this great gift of the new covenant announced by Jeremiah in about 586 BC and do our best to keep our side of the covenant, welcoming the stranger, helping the needy, spreading love, peace, and joy wherever we are. Let us do all in our power to ensure that all people are treated with the dignity they deserve as each and every one of them has been made in the image of God. Let us try to gain the courage to do the difficult, though unpopular things, simply because they are the right thing to do, as written on our hearts, on our consciences. Remember, God wants such close intimacy with us that the sign of the new covenant is the Eucharist, in which Jesus allows himself to be consumed by us, and so become a part of us. This is the intimate relationship between us and our God the new covenant was to bring. Divine infant Jesus of Bethlehem, come and take birth in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Sheila, for that. So thank you for joining us for this week one reflection and that message of, of hope that comes from the birth of Christ in the midst of darkness that we see down through the centuries. So join us again next week for week two of our Advent Reflection and be sure to check out the other resources on, on the website for, the, for this Advent journey. So thank you.